Hey everyone, my name is Michael and today I want to show you some neat improvements that we did to our persisted query pipeline. Before we get started, I have a new course on dorm train, getting started with GraphQL in .NET. This is not the typical getting started course that you find everywhere else. With over seven and a half hours of content, it teaches what GraphQL is, but also dives deep into patterns and best practices, schema design and schema evolution. The first 300 of you who are getting this course will get a 20% discount with the code STYPE20. If you want to dive even deeper, you can join one of our online workshops where the Core Chili Cream team teaches you everything we know about GraphQL from backend to frontend. And because I'm launching a new course on Dome Train, I'm chipping in a 30% discount on all of our online workshops. Check out our online workshops on learn.chilicream.com. All the links and information you can find below the video in the description. If you like our content, please hit the like and subscribe button below the video. And with that, let's dive in. Persistent Query is a great way to make your API, the integration between backend and frontend very robust and add a lot of security to your backend because only the queries that your frontends are using are allowed against the backend. You basically create a very optimized GraphQL API layer. I already prepared that here. I have here, for instance, a Blazor application that runs with Strawberry Shake. And what we configured here is that we are using the persistent query output for the release build and we are outputting it into our GraphQL server here. So if I run my front end here with the release configuration, it will start up and it will create this folder here. And in this folder, I can see this is actually the hash of the query. And this is the query that my client wants to run. So now in my GraphQL server, I can quickly set up the pipeline for this by chaining into my GraphQL configuration here, a use persisted query pipeline. So this activates the persisted query pipeline in Hot Chocolate, but we also have to register the store where our query sits. In this instance, we are using just the file system here. So let's quickly go to NuGet and look up the package for a file system storage provider. In NuGet, we can just look for hot chocolate dot persisted. And then we can see here the persisted query provider. You could, for instance, use Redis. You can also use banana cake pop or whatnot. But I'm using here the hot chocolate persisted query file system. And then we go here to our packages. And we just gonna add that. With this added, let's quickly restore. And then we can go to our program CS here. And then we add the file system query storage. And in here we pass the pass where we are storing our queries. So this is the persistent queries here. And then we are actually good to go. We can run this thing. Our server's up, so we're gonna go to our client here. Let's grab the URL. When we go on our website here, you can see when I run it, I get this GraphQL call to the backend and if I look at that I can see this hash that's the query ID and I also can see the operation name but it's not nice from a traceability standpoint think also about the whole trace pipeline like Cloudflare or what else you have in between you always have this GraphQL endpoint here and then you have to look into the payload to figure out what kind of request that is right also from a debuggability standpoint we also always have here GraphQL. So with Hot Chocolate 14, we can actually change that. We can go back here and then we can map in here another route. And that's the map GraphQL persisted operations route that we map here. And actually on production, you could get rid of the general map GraphQL route here and just use the persisted operations route if you're using persisted operations. So let me restart client and backend. Then we go back to our client, we refresh this thing. And then you can see we still get our GraphQL result here, but now we have here a get product list name. And that is actually the operation we are doing here. If I look into that operation, I can actually see that the same request we are sending against the standard GraphQL route, but this is now a semantic route but it also carries our query ID here. So it only works for this particular request. So if we look here at the headers, you can see that our request here consists actually of the GraphQL route here, then has the persistent query ID in the route and also the operation name. This makes it super traceable. Now, wherever you are, Cloudflare, or whatever tool you have, you have a semantic route you can use in there. So it's now much better to measure impact or pressure against that API. And also you have a one-to-one -one relation to 
the semantic operation, but also to the query version. So you can grab either of these and look them up. So what do you think about our new semantic routes that we have for persisted queries in Hot Chocolate 14? Sound out in the comments. If you want to help our project, please go to GitHub and give us a GitHub star. This is the easiest contribution you can do to any open source project. So please star the open source project that you're using. And with this, I'm out.